Uncle Jed, I decided I ain't gonna be a brain surgeon. <laughs> I can bear up under that. After uh, all, we still got Granny. Maybe one doctor in the family is enough. <laughs> I'm sure glad you're taking it so good. Uh, what made you change your mind? I seen another one of them double knot spy movies. Uncle Jed, that is what I was meant to be. <laughs> not not seven has got the world by the tail. <laughs> Yeah, I remember you was all fired up over him a while back. Uh, he's one does all that uh, fighting and loving. Does he ever? <laughs> hey, as long as you're working on shoes, would you mind hollering out the heel so I can put a little radio in there? A radio in the heel of your shoe? Yes, sir. That's where Double Knot 7 carries his. It seems like a mighty unhandy place to carry it. Uh, why don't you just carry it in his pocket? Well, I, I can't tell you that. Secret, huh? No, sir, I just ain't sure. <laughs> there you are. You carry yours in your pocket. Okay. Hey, but there's something I'm gonna need right away, and that's iron for my hat. Iron for your hat? Yes, sir. There was this fellow in the movie that had an iron hat. He kept throwing it, double knot seven. <laughs> but trying to kill him. Why didn't he just shoot him? I can't tell you that neither. <laughs> If anybody goes to skimming iron hats at me, he's going to get one skimmed right back at him. Hey, watch where you're throwing your hat, Jethro. You'd just be glad it wasn't iron. You want to come swimming with me? Shucks, no. I'm going to be a double knot spy. Only time they go swimming is underwater to blow up something. That sounds like fun. I'll be a double knot spy with you. It's too dangerous for girls. You'll just wind up getting painted gold. That sounds like fun, too. Forget it, Ellie. Girls can't be double knots. Why not? I don't know why not. Heck, fire ain't hardly one myself yet. <laughs> well, I can do anything you can do. You can't be a double knot. I can't do. Can't neither. Can't. 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 Now, Jethro, you let your cousin Ellie play double note spy with you. <laughs> Uncle Jed, being a double knot spy ain't play. Heck, fire, that rascal hauls off and saves whole countries. What the frickin' you say? Yes, sir. But this time it was ours. The bad guys was after Fort Knox. And if old Not Not Seven hadn't taken a hand, the next time Uncle Sam needed gold, he'd have been milking a dry cow. <laughs> Ellie, if you're done with your swimming, you can get busy with your chores. Ain't been yet, Granny. Oh, so you finally got back with my beans and my fat back, did you? Doggone it, Granny. I plumb forgot. You give me some more money, I'll fetch it right now. Where's the money I give you before? Well, on my way down to the store, there was this double knot spy picture playing at the movie theater. So I went in. You mean to say that you spent my Vittles money on a movie? Well, spent some of the money on Vittles. Four boxes of popcorn, half a dozen candy bars, and a couple of giant orange drinks. <laughs> Are you gonna hickory switch him or am I? Yeah, ain't nobody gonna hickory switch me. What did you say? <laughs> double knot spies don't get switched. And they're cutting two by death rays, handcuffed to atom bombs, and have iron hats thrown at them. They wouldn't hold still for switching. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> How about paddling? Granny, I reckon Jethro is a mite wrought up. The boy's had a big day. He thinks he's come upon his life's calling. Life's calling? <laughs> yes, ma'am, Granny. I'm gonna be a double knot spy. Well, congratulations, Mr. Double Knock Spy. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, you just cut mud down to that store and spy me up a sack of beans and a slab of fat back. <laughs> and you do it in a double knot hurry. <laughs> hey, boy, you'll be needing some money. Doggone it, Uncle Jed. I bet your old Double Knot Seven wouldn't let nobody swat him on a seat of his britches and send him running for beans and fat back. Well, old Double Knot Seven ain't never run into Granny. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Jane. Oh, Jethro, hello. Hey, do you reckon Mr. Drysdale might be needing a Double Knot spy? What? I mean, like, is anybody fixing to rob his bank or something? <laughs> you tricked me, Cushing. I'm afraid our host is losing his charm and affability. Come along, 36, 23, 36. <laughs> Did you hear that? Mr. Drysdale, are they a couple of secret agents? A couple of crooks is what they are. She? Well, I bet if you followed them, you'd find that she doesn't work in his bank at all. Hot dog! That sounds like a job for a double knot. Double what? A double knot spy. I'll shadow him. Hey, wait for me! I'm gonna shadow you! <laughs>
I thought you could give me the slip, huh? I shadowed you. Just a moment, young man. Who are you? Let's just say I'm double knot 10. Puts me a knot up on 07. <laughs> now then, miss. Dog gone. There goes my secret radio again. <laughs> Every time I step down on it, the blasted thing commences playing. <laughs> hey, now, hold on there, mister. Don't try nothing unless you want to get this iron hat skimmed at you. <laughs> when I say iron, I mean iron. <laughs> so watch yourself. <laughs> You shoot me with a tranquilizer gun? You spray me with nerve gas or something? It was an iron hat that knocked you out. Doggone, you got in the first lick. <laughs> that don't stop a smart double knot like me. <laughs> I find a different place to hide my secret radio. Where's my hat? This letter must have fallen. J.D. Clampett? That's Drysdale's star depositor. What is your connection with him? Well, he's my uncle. Oh, no. If there's any secret blabbing to be done around here, she's going to do it. Me? What makes you think so? Well, hit fire. That's what always happens when a double knot spy tangles with a pretty girl. A one kiss and she spills the beans. Watch this. <laughs> J.D. Clampett is my uncle. We have pretty near $50 million in Mr. Drysdale's bank. My cousin Ellie May commenced working there today. Well, that's very interesting. What else can you tell us? You keep kissing, I'll think of something. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you step inside and make yourself comfortable, and I'll join you directly. Thank you. Not at all. Well, boy, show me what you got. Well, first off... <laughs> this here's my smoke screen maker. <laughs> this here's my oil slick spreader. <laughs> Come look at this. Suppose they some rascals chasing me. They goes to shooting at me. Then I give them this. Dangerous, ain't it, boy? Spying's a dangerous business. That's a come a pay so good. Oh, Mr. Drysdale, give me twenty dollars. <laughs> What's this contraption here? Suppose they go to shooting at you from all directions. This here is my bulletproof shield. Watch this. How about that? That's <laughs> handy. But uh, how do you see to drive? Jetro? How do you see from in there? It's one of the bugs I ain't worked out yet. What's that handler? Oh, that there releases the ejector seat. What's an ejector seat? Well, suppose somebody's riding with you that you want to get shut up. You just yank on that rascal, next thing you know, he's 50 feet in the air. <laughs> well, you finally got back home with my beans and my fat back, did you? <laughs> Plenty. I see your fetch cut me home for supper. I'll go right now, Granny. You mean you forgot again? I've been so busy getting kissed and rigging all this special stuff on my spy car that I... Where's Ellie Mae? Did you forget her, too? I'll fetch her home with the beans and fat back. <laughs> I'm going with you this time. You can't be trusted. Okay, Granny, but be careful. <laughs> My dog is boy, you sure got the bugs worked out of that thing. <laughs> 